Hi! Today we're going to cover just a few of the different illustration tools in the toolbox. Far back in the prehistoric age, the first artist probably took a stick and most likely drew the first stick figure to make fun of their hunting partner for the foul odor that escaped them which could have just as easily killed their prey. Many artists throughout history have chosen to live a more simple life in order to focus on their craft. Many artists would have to travel far and wide in search of their favorite brand of pigment or street tacos, braving the dangerous trials of going out in public and networking. Yes, the early days of the elusive artist were not for the faint of heart. In today's world, however, thanks to the new marvel of manufacturing, the modern artist has the advantage of many tools and conveniences at their disposal, so they never have to leave their home. Welcome back, right now, at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. So for today, I want to stick with paper media. There are obviously a lot of kinds of media for drawing, oldest being cable. For today, I want to stick with paper media, oldest, art on earth it was done on rock. Thousands of years later, we can still appreciate the skill and creativity of our forebears. Most often, they used something called red ochre, a natural type of earth, the red dark base. At some point, there was someone playing in the mud, from mud pies and home for dinner or something. A stick with paper media. And the next day, it was kind of hot out and it kind of baked them, and they were like, hey, that would be a good way to hold stuff and cook stuff and, and like write and whatnot. Clay That's how it actually happened. That's how it happened, I'm sure of it. Which tells us that even back then, there was that socially awkward and reclusive kid who would rather spend time drawing on a cable or playing in the mud away from the rest of the tribe instead of getting a job. So when it comes to paper, it's the Egyptians who were credited with some of the first forms of paper media. They called it papyrus. Maybe on the papyrus plane. The correct pronunciation is papyrus. Uh, which is also where the word paper comes from. The more rough the paper, the more options you have for shading, depth, and contrast. But they are also less forgiving when it comes to making a mistake. The smoother or finer textured papers are the smoother. Smoother or finer textured paper offer cleaner lines and a lot more options for the detail, you know, the fine detail stuff. It's also much more forgiving if you need to erase something. That erase something, you erase something. As a side note, thrift shops often have scrapbook sections that erase something. Thrift stores have paper. You can get it cheap. I'll uh, experiment with stuff. Try it out. See what you like. You can also get really cheap picture frames at thrift stores, and one of the benefits is you can pull out whatever art that was in it before, if it, you know, usually it's cheap reproduction stuff, and you can flip it over and do your art on that, and that way you don't have to buy any extra medium. You can just, or media, medium. I always get those confused. You could draw on the back of paintings, flip them around, and put them back in, and guess what? You got a finished piece of artwork that cost you four dollars. Okay, so, drawing tools. There's a vast array of choices. Modern graphite, inks, clays, pigments, minerals, like chalk, and it's snooty highbrow cousin pastels. Cousin pastels. Even lead, yep. Up until we found out how toxic and poisonous it is. It's a good thing to learn. On a side note, ancient Romans would use lead for water pipes, cups, bowls, and cooking pots. Some historians believe that the rich and powerful elite of Rome um, were the ones doing this, and uh, it caused all kinds of health problems and mental health problems, and a lot of, and, well, some historians believe that they contributed to the fall of Rome. Stay away from lead if you want your civilization to endure and have a, a 
would not corrupt the system. Illustration pencils come in a variety of different shades, so you're going to want to get yourself a shading graph or an illustration gradient graph, and that way you're going to be able to train your eyes to be able to differentiate between the different shades and different darkness or lightness of different pencils, and it works as well for other shading techniques. Finally, of course, we have the giant of drawing tools, which is undefeated from the top spot in history as the most widely used, versatile, oldest, and cheapest of them all. Was fire separated man from the animals, and he could in time be more than a hunter. He could become a farmer, an artist. And what I'm talking about is charcoal. I don't know who the first person to root through the ashes of campfire and realize that they could that they could use this partially burned wood to draw. But we're all better for it. Now wood ash and charcoal have an insane amount of uses and applications, from makeup to cement, and of course, obviously art. And much of society's ability to build structures is built on the backbone of it. For example, modern Portland cement is made from refining the ashes of coal, and that's called fly ash. Sticking to this theme, I'm going to be focusing on using charcoal. But first, I want to take a quick detour uh, to cover a couple other tools real quick before I kind of like show you some stuff. First up, a, tor a tortillon. This thing. It's not a tortilla. As much as I love Mexican food. It's also called a blending stump. Which is basically just some rolled up paper tapered at the end and it's used to smudge or blend stuff. I prefer this for heavy to medium shades. I prefer this for heavy shades that are just below the darkness of your pen or hard charcoal. This is the store-bought stuff. It's really cheap. Charcoal. You can get it. It's pretty cool. So what you do, what you can do is you can apply some of your your charcoal to some other piece of paper you take and you rub. After you rub it on your other piece of paper, you can kind of just kind of rub. Oh, probably not a good idea to do it on the paper. You can just use it as a transfer so you can use it for a shape, right? See how it's got that nice trail off? It's going to be able to give you a really, really good gradient for stuff. And then you can just kind of bring it out and you can use it to smudge stuff and it'll just get lighter and 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 lighter. So there you go. That's the basics of a tortillon. Not a tortilla. Then we have the paintbrush. It doesn't have to be just for paint. Brushes work great for medium to light shading and work even better to get full coverage into the paper fibers so that you have a zero bleed through from the color of the original paper coming up underneath uh, because of the, the little cavities inside of the paper that it didn't quite fully get into. It's a really great way to just move all of it right down into all those tiny little cavities. Obviously a finer brush will shade lighter and a stiffer brush will shade heavier. So you know, work with that and see what you can do. If you have a soft brush that you really like the consistency of the fibers, because it works really well, but it's just too soft to be able to get the kind of darkness or the heavy shading you want, you can easily just clip off the ends, make it a little shorter, and that's going to give you some more stiffness, but yet keep the small fibers. It's a really great way, so don't be afraid to modify your brushes to be able to get that effect. Kind of like that. I also like to cut my brushes to get different types of shapes out of my brushes to be able to get different types of shapes on my drawings. You can play around with that a little bit, but that's another thing you can do. Again, don't be afraid to modify your brushes. Just don't do it on the insanely expensive ones because uh, it's gonna be a bad day if you don't know what you're doing. And a waste of money. Trust me. Next, we have eraser. Most people think erasers are just for removing mistakes or, or cleaning something up. That's not the case. An eraser can also be used on its own as a tool to especially do highlights. It works really great for this, especially at the end when highlights are all that's left that you have to do. That's when an eraser can really shine and add extra dimensions to your illustration. So don't be afraid to use an eraser to add and don't be afraid to use an eraser to add something to your drawing instead of just removing mistakes. Here you got the standard one. You got the, the sticky type that works a little cleaner. It gets a little bit more gunk out of the, the smaller fibers and smaller crevices of the papers. See, it's all sticky and like, like silly body. You got your round erasers. Those work really good for certain types of situations. 
You've got some of the harder ones that are a little easier to use for defining shapes. You can, it, it's really great for being able to cut them. The, the harder, this is a pin eraser actually. Just because you can cut them and trim them to shape and form. And so that way you're going to be able to do really, really fine detail work with an eraser. Well, it's crazy. The bleeding of particles on paper due to your hand touching spots you previously drew on is going to be a huge source of frustration and pain. When I was young, it was very frustrating for me to constantly have my work get blurry and messed up due to bleeding. Bleeding of my pencil on different spots of the paper it was really annoying. So what you can do, um, one of the cheapest things you can do, what it's called is the thing you can do to stop this bleeding is to start in the upper left hand corner of your drawing, unless you're left handed, then it's a great tool to avoid this altogether is called an artist mall. Not Darth Maul. Artist Maul. Not Darth Maul! Artist Maul. It's basically just a stick that you support above your paper or canvas and use it to rest your hand on. So it helps keep you from touching your paper or canvas. I like to use a yardstick or a curtain rod. Yes! Curtain rods are cheap and you can get them at just about any thrift shop. What's great about them is they adjust in length. So you can use them in a bunch of different angles. Besides, we all need a little bit of light, don't we? Well, I hope you, uh, I hope this was informative and maybe inspired you to practice. So I'll see you next, I'll see, see you next week, neighbor. Do something kind for someone. Tell them you love them. And remember, the rock bottom is the best place to start building from. <laughs>if you enjoyed this content please consider donating or purchasing some of my work you can find that through the link in the description box thrift stores have paper you can get it cheap